Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to discuss one of the coolest available locality boas. It's called the long tail boa or a boa constrictor longicata. These beautiful darkly colored semi-dwarf boas, which come to us from Peru, have a huge amount to recommend them to every boa constrictor enthusiast. Today I want to show you a few examples from my collection and I'll also discuss the natural history and captive husbandry of these beautiful animals. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more free videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. This is a female boa constrictor longicata. So this girl was born in 2015 and she's about five years old, just reaching sexual maturity. And the first thing you'll notice, and which, which is what I think is the defining characteristic of these boas, is the beautiful dark coloration. So you can see all this dark pigment in these animals and the beautiful markings. They actually don't start off like this. When they're born, they don't have nearly this much dark pigment. And then with each shed, they acquire more dark pigment until as adults, they look like this. There's actually a morph in common boas that's called IMG or increasing melanin gene that has a similar thing going on where they get darker over time. And this looks to be a natural form of the IMG type of phenomenon. The markings are very beautiful, especially on the face. So if you look at the head of this boa, you'll see she's got this beautiful dark head spear on the top of her head. And then the side stripes are also very beautiful. She's got these dark, uh, kind of very blotchy uh, stripes on the side of her head that go through her eye. They, I think they probably have one of the most beautiful heads of any boa constrictor. I think they're up there with the true red tails with the, for the beauty of their heads. You'll notice also the head has a unique shape or a very distinctive shape. The, it's kind of wide and bulbous at the neck and then it tapers quite a bit and they have these pointy snouts. The eyes, in addition, are also kind of bulge out a bit. Um, this is a semi-dwarf boa. The adults typically are in the five to four or five to six foot range, sometimes a little bit bigger. So they don't get too big. The um, personality is fairly laid back. You can see she's not trying to get away. She's just kind of hanging out and, you know, she's not squeezing my hand really tightly either. So they're a great locality boa, and as I mentioned, I think these uh, longicata have a huge amount to recommend them to almost any boa keeper. Boa constrictor longicata is actually one of the most recently described subspecies of boa constrictor. They were first described in a paper that came out in 1991 that was authored by Robert Price and Paul Russo. Paul Russo is the brother of the noted locality boa breeder, Vin Russo. So these animals um, actually came in in a shipment in 1988. And the authors of these papers of this paper saw that they were something new and uh, different from what had been seen before. And scale counts put them as a separate subspecies from other animals in that area. And then one of the most distinctive differences is the long tail which gives them their name. So these animals have the longest tail relative to their body of any type of boa constrictor. And if you probe them, um, the males will actually probe to a depth of over 30 scales, which is deeper than other types of boa constrictors. The animals uh, come from a village or a town in Northwest Peru that's known as tombs. And they've also, they're also called tombs boas. And they're also, they extend up into um, southwestern part of Ecuador as well, northwestern Peru and southwestern Ecuador. There were only a few shipments of these beautiful boas back in the late 80s and early 90s, and all of the bloodlines available in captivity today are descended from those original shipments. Um, the region near Tombs is a very violent region due to the drug trade, so you wouldn't want to go there to try to collect these boas for that reason. These animals actually live in the wild in a more temperate environment than what is noted at other similar latitudes in South America. It can actually get kind of cool in the winter down into the 50s. 
And for that reason, these animals are more hardy in captivity than the true red-tailed boas, and they also require temperature cycling during the winter to properly breed them. So this guy is a 2016 animal. This is a male. Uh, this is from Vin Russo's bloodline. Um, so this guy is getting darker. He'll probably darken up a little bit more, but he's definitely darkened up since I got him as a baby. The animal I showed you in the last scene was my uh, Beset bloodline female, so she's a year older than this guy, and I currently have her paired up in a breeding trial, so fingers crossed that maybe I'll get some baby Longicata sometime later this year. This is a 2016 female boa constrictor Longicata. She's actually also from Vin Russo's bloodline. She's a litter mate to the male that I showed you in the last scene, and I think this might be the favorite boa constrictor Longicata that I have in my collection. She just got such gorgeous markings. You can see how dark her saddles are, and then she got this creamy white color in her background, as well as this beautiful yellowish uh, brown. If you look at her belly, you can see the beautiful belly speckling. And then of course, she's got these gorgeous head coloration. You can see the dark spear and the dark stripes on the side of her head. Just truly a breathtaking animal. Both her and her brother looked quite a bit different when they were babies, but I'm really happy with how they developed over the last few years. In addition to the beautiful wild type boa constrictor longicatas, there's a few morphs or selectively bred lines that are being worked with. So there's an anorithristic variant, which is a simple recessive trait, and these anery uh, BCL lack all of the red pigment. When you look at the wild type, you can see they don't have a whole lot of red pigment to begin with. So they're kind of in the direction of anorithristic. But with the anery gene on board, they have a much whiter background color and a higher contrast between the background color and the saddle. Some of them almost look like a black and white photograph. Um, another bloodline that's being worked with is this high yellow variant. And you can see this one has a little bit of yellowish uh, in her background color, but the high yellow one has, a, has more yellow, it's a little brighter and a little bit cleaner. And that, rather than being a single gene morph, that's kind of like a line bred trait um, that's being bred. And then there's one additional morph that's actually a patternless form of BCL, um, which is called the zero morph. And it almost, the coloration almost looks like the patternless um, boa constrictor sabogae. They have mostly patternless tan body and a little bit of um, dark color towards the tail. Of course, the shape of these animals is completely different from the boa constrictor sabogae. And this zero morph is so unique that the breeder, um, Hermann Stokel in Germany, has actually filed for a trademark on the name zero. Um, so that's unusual. I never heard of a trademark on a name of a boa morph before. So in conclusion, Boa Constrictor Longicata is an amazing locality boa with a lot to recommend it to any boa keeper. If you're looking for a relatively small size boa that is beautiful in appearance and quite docile in temperament, the Boa Constrictor Longicata is something you might want to check out. As always, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me or you can also write them below. I thank you for your attention and remember to enjoy your boas.